A year ago, my husband Matt and I sold everything we own and moved our family and our business to Puerto Rico. My dream was just to own one designer bag and now I help thousands of women build their collections. Follow along on our unique journey as we grow our seven figure business to eight figures and beyond. Welcome to season one of Richport. 7,900 or something like that and SMS sales were 1,700. <laughs> Do you see where I'm like, hmm, what's going on here? I'm either doing something wrong or my customer just does not text and that's obviously not the answer because everybody texts and again i've done all of these myself i am literally not an expert so um, yeah no you're good you're, you're doing better than most people <laughs> yeah so you have most of the basic ones for sms are you sending it out pretty much like campaign newsletter style where say like once a week your entire sms list gets hit with a text so i don't think there none of those flows are sms i think i don't know this is my okay. problem Okay, so we just jumped off a phone call with a marketing guy, helps with email automations, things like that. We are doing a massive rebrand soon, so stay tuned for that. And so we're trying to make sure that everything is ready to go for the website, um, as far as emails, texting, stuff like that. So really great guy. It's actually a friend of Matt's buddy. So he, uh, we chatted for like an hour about emails, fun stuff. <laughs> oh, here we go. Hello. We're checking in. Ah, what's the name of the base? Uh, Milk Honey Collection. We just picked our farm passes and we're gonna go check out our space and she was showing it to me on the map and it looks like probably double the size than I was expecting I guess they got us into a really nice spot so we do have enough inventory I think I have like eight boxes being delivered but I think they're delivering throughout the show so we'll have to play around with that a little bit to see how the setup will look but we're here we're ready and uh, let's make some money in Vegas mm -hmm. space and it's like I said much bigger than I thought it's more of an island space instead of like a corner or an inlay space so we now have these sides and fronts available so now we're trying to figure out how many tables to get um, and if we have enough inventory to display on all of those tables so now my creative uh, brain's gonna freak out but she did say we have all day and all night so we can take a pit stop go play some poker then come back at 2 a.m. and set our booth up a little bit <laughs> The destination is on your left. We randomly decided to come to the Pond Stars location here in Las Vegas at the Strip and check it out. Mostly just because we're curious what's going on inside. But it's kind of sentimental to me because when my kids were born and I had my C-sections and I'm laying on the table there, I couldn't move. The one thing that was on TV was Pond Stars on repeat. And so it's kind of fun to me, fun to go in. But yeah, we, we took a, we're going to take a lap around and see what's inside. Indianapolis Colts Super Bowl ring. Oh yeah. From 2006. So that'd be super sweet to have. Really cool. They have a whole designer section over here. I see a Salea, a Trottier in there, some really good pieces. Matt and the man himself. 
That's my buddy. We're for, we, uh, we met, we're new friends. So. Okay, so fun fact, we were at the baggage claim here in Vegas when we got to Vegas and there was this guy that was promoting his show that he was going to be playing. He's like, tomorrow night I'm going to be at Resort World in Vegas and tell him if you like country music. And I wasn't really listening in the beginning, but I heard country music and I was like, I like country music. So I asked him, where are you going to be again? And he told me, he was like, do you know Chris Cagle? And I was like, yeah. Like, I literally jammed out to this guy and when I was like 18, 19, and 20, his CD was always in my truck on replay. And I'm just like, he kept saying, yeah, that's me. And hey, this was 18 years ago. So he was a younger guy. He was on tour. And he looked a little different now, 18 years older, just like me. And I was like, no, you're not Chris Cagle. He's like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, no, you're not. He's like, <laughs> so I was really embarrassed. But anyways, we're here at his show. And it starts at 7. So we are going to grab some food and a couple drinks. And I'm going to try to convince Matt to do some two-step in with me amongst all the cowboys that are here for NFR. So uh, he's got to keep up. Or not suck. Hey guys, day one of Stetson Country Christmas, and uh, we are super excited. We're a little tired. You kept me up way too late last night. Yeah. Trying to win at poker. Yeah, I'm never playing poker again, ever, <laughs> ever He'll again. He'll probably, a hundred bucks says you'll play tonight. <sighs> and you know what's funny? He's like, no, I promise I won't. And then we'll walk past one and he'll be like, that table looks good. <laughs> Anyways, I'm never playing poker again. But day one of Country, Stetson Country Christmas, and uh, we're on our way to breakfast right now. Basically, I have to get the banner up and then lay out the bags, and then we're ready. It's about 8:45, so we have an hour and 15 minutes till it starts, and uh, we're gonna grab a quick breakfast. We're trying to grab it quick, and uh, and get down there. We are having some issues. We shipped a bunch of packages, uh, DHL and we're having some issues. Usually DHL delivers in like three days for me and I shipped eight packages here to Vegas and I have had zero arrive and they keep saying every single day out for delivery, out for delivery, but they never are delivered. So I have been on the phone super stressed with DHL since yesterday morning with no real answers, but they told me worst case scenario, if it doesn't get delivered today, then they'll put it like for a pickup at the DHL plan or whatever. So tomorrow, if we don't get it today, tomorrow we'll take an Uber over there and get our uh, packages. So we will have packages, we will have new arrivals, just I don't know why they won't deliver them to me. Cool, day one, let's go. All right, we're setting up first day and this is my least favorite part. It takes a while to get my creative brain on so I usually try to get everything like on the tables and then start organizing them where I want them to be. The good thing is we didn't get the eight boxes yet that I shipped here but I think we have more than enough to fill up all the tables so that's good news because we did end up getting one or two more tables than we thought because we have this island space now so. So 
So I think I had mentioned earlier this morning that I was having some issues with DHL. They literally had my package out for delivery for the past like four days and they just like weren't delivering it. So I've been on the phone with them. I've been on live chat with them multiple times the last couple of days. And all of a sudden I get a phone call from DHL and the guy says, hey, where am I supposed to deliver your packages? Because I had put the hotel address and I was like, literally, you can just literally, Matt will meet you at the front. He will pick them up. Just like, I need them. So we're getting new arrivals on the website like now. And I'm so glad that these bags finally made it to me because I was getting nervous. It's a lot of bags to be held up somewhere random. Look what we Got have bags. here. New arrivals. We have purses. Sam, crushing it. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Oh, that's awesome. I got new arrivals here. Now I need to take pictures. Sam was awesome. Appreciate him so much. And uh, we're back in business. We're good to go. Okay, so we just got a bunch of new arrivals. We got seven boxes of new arrivals for this event, and we're just gonna, we're opening number one, and we see that it's a box, so I'm excited to see what is inside of this box. yesterday uh, it's day two of the event yesterday we got a crap ton of DHL boxes and so right now I'm hurrying to get these online taking pictures and then uh, Kimmy is doing the whiteout background and tagging them so we're getting them online at the show just to keep the, the booth filled Some really cool bags in here. A couple of duplicates of some that I've have or already have, but I'm gonna start taking pictures of them. Hopefully, get them online because this is kind of the last week of being able to ship and get stuff to customers before Christmas. So my goal is to get them all online. That way, my online customers can shop and get Christmas stuff in before Christmas. So that's what we're doing. What's um, in that box already? Oh yeah, so it's Speedy 40, which these always go fast. Um, a Tivoli GM, which I don't get very often. Usually I get the PM Tivoli, so that's nice. A totally, um, our little friend across the way, he might like this one because uh, he was looking at a Speedy Azor for his mom. He might like this one. And then um, a Looping Damier, which I've never seen. It probably was a special order. I've never seen a Looping bag with the Damier. It was probably a special order. And then I got this one. 
went ahead and put took pictures of this one and already put it on the website. The Lock Me To Marine Rogue in navy blue with red lining. It's a pretty cool bag. Okay, so we are in our hotel room shipping purses out. We sold 21 bags online the last couple of days, so we are shipping them out from our hotel room. A little unorthodox, but I've got to get these items out to everybody for before Christmas, right? And Matt's going to take an Uber to USPS in the morning and get them sent out to all of our wonderful customers. I forgot scissors, so I'm having to do things a little weird. Tear the labels and bite the tape. <laughs> but it's How life. Do you think we have to ship out? I said we have 21. 21? Yeah, I counted them earlier. But I think we have 24. All right, the uh, golf cart Christmas parade is about to start. Our neighbors decked out their golf carts and uh, it's coming down the road here. So we're excited. We're the first ones to see it. So let's uh, let's see what our neighbors put together. <laughs> Christmas morning with the boys. Um, they're one and a half and two and a half. And this year, Bo actually kind of understood a little bit of what was going on. He woke up and came out here and was like, wow, wow. And now he's just playing with his pigs, which are his favorite thing in the world, those little Peppa Pig animals. Connor's trying to figure out if he likes this bouncing dinosaur or not. But really, he likes daddy's espresso thingy better. Timmy got this espresso machine for me. Connor's already digging into the cup, but uh, I'm excited about this. We're like coffee addicts here at this house, so this will be nice. Thanks, Kimmy. Major coffee Santa. Addict. You want her to go surfing? Okay. Okay. Open. Open side. Wow, it's brothers, it's brothers. Brothers, brothers. What's the elephant say? Oh, it's brothers. Hey, we're all together in a bunch. Wow, his ears. What's on your feet? Pig? 
the Bridges household and there are toys everywhere. The boys, Bo has an excessive amount of Peppa Pig stuff now and if he ever asks for another pig in his life, I don't know if that will happen. Khan is just playing with a miscellaneous piece from some random toy and we are a little um, about to go stir crazy in here if we have to stay any longer in the house. We were thinking about going to the beach, but I think we're gonna save it for tomorrow since they're already probably tired from playing with all these toys anyways. Matt and I are gonna have a glass of wine, simmer down after a long Christmas. And um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Rich For It. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment below, and let us know what you think. And, and we'll see you next time. Don't fall. Don't fall.